Hi everyone, this is the second part or second session of Art Materials Advisor from Natural Pigments. My name is Tatiana Zaitseva. I am one of the directors here and uh, I will be assisted today by George O'Hanlon, founder of the Natural Pigments and our marketing director Leslie Now. Today we will talk about mediums and I, as, as always, I had my homework and I look online to see what is available for you. It was not as bad as with, with lead white, but all videos about mediums were show every each of them started as most confusing part uh, of the painting is um, is um, uh, mediums and I thought it's something remind me every each of that video remind me something and uh, I figured out this remind me your local grocery store where you one day decided suddenly you every day you cook in your dinners but one day you decided to cook great new dish you go to store and you have an aisle of the materials and you of the items and so it's like here is the price you read the ingredients you try to understand what is what and here a stranger walks and he's like i like this one and you say really is that good and he's like yeah i use 20 years and he's going and you grab that and while he's leaving, you are saying like, wait, wait, how do you use that? And he's like, oh, I put in microwave. And you say like, God, I don't have microwave, but this guy likes 20 years of this product. So let me try. You come home, you boil that and you try it and you say like, what the hell is that? How come he likes this? So most stubborn of you, of course, decided to put that in oven still didn't work we put some kind of ingredients more and um, still doesn't work and most upset of you call the co company and ask what the heck so i bought that great um, product but it doesn't work for you and company is asking like what did you do and you say oh i boiled and they say what else? And you say like, oh, I put the vinegar, salt, and the, and the pepper. And they are saying, this is not how you're supposed to use. You need to use a microwave. And you say like, I don't like microwave. That's how materials are used. And that's how we here in, in our company every day answering your uh, phone calls, asking you, what are you doing with mediums? And very often it's not correct. From today, what I want you to start think about mediums first as a chemical and second as a tool. Chemical because everything what you use in your studio, paint, mediums, solvents, it's all chemicals and it's everything about interaction. And you can have great interaction between two of them. But if you put third one, suddenly everything is broken. So I will try today to navigate to you what works, what doesn't work together. And the most important thing I I, I want you think from today about every medium you use as a tool think it's like brushes you never use brush i don't know like the bristle brush 22 flat on the place where you need to to paint the uh, eye blush same as uh, same as mediums so today we will cover three types of mediums it's fluid it will be gel medium and it will be paste and um, 
I while I will talk, I will show you what's more um, more interesting on my, my in my in my understanding, or uh, I think what will be more important for you to know. But if you have any questions, so then like always, we will do George after hour of our session. Uh, he can read the questions, and so I will answer. Or if I can, he's right here. He will answer too. Um, here we have the role of the linseed oils. I have here 13 different linseed oils and two, one safflower, one walnut oil. And the idea today was to show you how different colors they have. So here's your regular linseed oil and I will show you this color, this light, I mean color. And uh, of course, here is safflower, and you see how just can we show the you see the color of this too. So this is aged refined linseed oil, and this is walnut oil, a uh, safflower oil. I'm sorry. Here is the difference between walnut oil. You see the the color. Here is our sun bleached linseed oil. And you see then, so what we do here is natural pigments. We bleach in our linseed oil on our California sun for three, sometimes five months. It depends uh, on the color what we, uh, and we every time judging, it's, it's again judging. We judge by ourselves. And so here is pale grinder oil. So you see the, the difference in, in the color but if i will take right here kettle body here and you see the difference but the most important not only color but in this case is viscosity you can yeah you can put back mm -hmm. so you see that viscosity and even more right here it's extra high viscosity bodied oil and you see then this is barely even moving based on that you can change property of your uh, painting and um, so I will show you today how to how to do that so one second, I will put this back. Another one, uh, one thing I wanted to say. So you read a lot these days, you read a lot about different oils, how to make your own oil, which is all good. But if you are lazy or don't have time or don't have ability to make, so we make for you. So we have sun bleached linseed oil, sun thickened linseed oil. Unfortunately, even uh, even if we try to do three three months, it's bleaching, but it's not thickening. So what we do, we will put on our. It's um, we have uh, big uh, tanks. Thank you, big tanks, and we put uh, strips of lead, and lead reacts to oil, and uh, especially to linseed oil. Walnut oil doesn't react much. But linseed oil react, and so it's giving, uh, and it's giving this different property. So it's thickening, and um, I will show you one uh, interesting thing, George. If you will show here, yes, thank you. So both of them, sun thickened oil, and if you will buy one during the summer, it will look like this, and if you will buy during the winter, it will look like like this. Because again, it's natural, it's react different to the metal and uh, the sun is different. And so that's why we have different uh, color on that oil. Uh, lately we had the question, um, you can check back. Mm -hmm. So lately we had this problem with uh, sun thickened walnut oil and um, we were doing that walnut oil for six months 
And unfortunately, the last moment, it was almost ready uh, for use. And we had the rain here in California, which rarely happened during the, uh, the summer, but it happened. And whole batch of walnut oil become the sun thickened walnut oil with rain water. And we can't give you because again if it would be you and just making for yourself that would be one story but for us to release that as a product it will behave different than just regular sun thickened walnut oil so it's why we decided to not put um, for you for for sale for now so we we wait another we will wait another three or four months uh for walnut uh, thickened walnut oil that's the question i'm uh, right the way answering because we have so many people call about the sun thickened walnut oil what about liquids so obviously if you want to make a paint more fluible so you add oil but what what if you want to make a let's say a transparent layer but you don't want to make your paint uh, thin so for that reason we have gel mediums and gel mediums in our in our and i will be back again to the oils we will uh, we will definitely talk about several of them and i will uh, give you an example on Venetian red and on ultramarine, uh, I think, red shade today. And you will see the difference, how every pigment uh, reacts different to the oils. And we will mix that with gel mediums and with paste mediums. And so then you will see the difference. So here we have, in our uh, store, we have six different gel mediums. And uh, you can you can put here and you can see here so the of course the most popular is oleo gel and oleo gel it's your regular aged refined linseed oil and it's mixed with fumed silica fumed silica it's an earth substance you probably eat every day in ketchup and toothpaste and it's uh, it's what makes uh, liquid gel like so that's what we created, uh, oleo gel. If you think then oleo gel dries too fast for you, so we have walnut oil gel. If you do want your paint dries or your medium dries dry faster, so we have oleo rest gel. But be careful, this uh, this has uh, alkyd, so if you don't like that, so then you you need to pay attention this is not for you wilson's medium based on um, all the recipe where the uh, wilson's was made but it was it is with turpentine it george created that specifically for people who paint outside plain air because uh, it it does sets very fast uh, it does have again um, uh, fumed silica and a little bit of the uh, wax so here we have Italian varnish and Italian varnish. I need to talk specifically about this because I will show you one oil. It's called dried, um, uh, dark drying oil. Other ways it's called black oil. And again, it's historical. And some, some artists are saying that it was as um, old as 16th century recipe and you can see on the bottom it's the uh, lead so what we do we take our aged refined linseed oil and we cook for uh, two and a half hours sometimes more it depends how you know the, the color is going and uh, so we cook this with litharge and it's essentially does it create the salt and if I will show you this and you can see it's um this is very interesting it does ha have have uh, interesting property we have group of artists who swears then this is the best medium ever 
but based on color of course you need to understand and it's definitely will uh, change the color of your painting so uh, paint so then you need to be careful but we will go back again to to that medium little bit later but italian varnish is made with dark drying oil and essentially it's uh, something what you accustomed to here marija and um, marija was um, uh, old uh, recipe and it started i believe in uh, 18 no Miguel, and uh, later started called Marija, but it started as Miguel, and um, it has an interesting property because uh, because of the uh, essentially oil, it's lubricate the, the the brush and it it will definitely make your uh, brush sliding through the paint. So uh, again, we will be back uh, on to that medium a little bit later when I will uh, mix this color and we have most romantic I call uh, our medium it's called Venetian medium and we use uh, we use again black oil and um, leaded powder glass an idea was then we we will create something for artists when it like when Venetians were using in 16th century where they will just spread the glass powder on their painting and it will be jewel-like. So we decided to give you that opportunity to, to make your paint looks like this. And so now I will show you three paste mediums. And um, so one is an impasta medium, which um it's basically aged refined linseed oil and your regular chalk and um um venetian uh, velasquez medium it's your bodied this high uh, low viscosity i mean high viscosity bodied oil and uh, and aged refined linseed oil it mix because you can't just use uh, high viscosity oil and I will show you and I will explain you why you can't use just one oil for that reason so and again chalk and uh, uh, we mixed here a little bit of barite and uh, and another um, organa clay so medium so here oh, I'm, I'm going back here's transparent base and that is the, probably one of the interesting and now uh, now very popular um, medium on our website and it's um, it's essentially almost the same like Velasquez or uh, impasta uh, medium but it's alkyd based it dries very fast and uh, it's why we call underpainting because when we were creating that uh, medium, we, we, we were thinking, like, how do we call? Do we call this fast dry, quick dry? And we realized then if we will just say then fast dry, then artist will use all over the, their painting and that could ruin your painting because it dries very fast. And if you don't keep up on the time with, uh, with mixing with your paint, some of them will be too fat some of them too lean and so then then on the end you can have a disaster because uh, it could be cracking or uh, or alligatoring and so then you don't want to to use that if, through entire painting and again when we will uh, when i will show you uh, the property of the every medium you will understand what i'm talking and of course we do have uh, um, another one but again i always very careful about talking about this it's impasta putty and it's even thicker than any of our um, our mediums and again i will show you but i will suggest only to use the sparingly 
we always when we teach our classes painting best practices we'll always say then think about mediums as a tool because if you will like many of you using liquid and based on formula and based what company made it it should not be used like that How, like like some of you oiling out with uh, with liquid and uh, this is not the fault of the company when you call us and saying then something gone wrong it is the fault of misunderstanding and again nobody taught you and nobody taught your teacher how to use that we are trying to here in uh, natural pigments we're trying to cover that gaps in 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 education because when you go to school you definitely uh, taught how to paint but nobody's teaching with what to paint what materials to use and these days it's suddenly becoming uh, very important because many of you before it w would be just very domestic but now in internet you suddenly talking about your problems and and you hear that somebody else having a uh, problem and so and and it's going on and on and on top of that artists are getting sued even by museums by art collectors because by using wrong materials they're failing uh, the uh, painting are uh, falling apart and it's not good let's start with fluid mediums and uh, i will today compare for you aged refined linseed oil and um, extra high viscosity body oil and i will mix that with uh with the paint and you will see the the difference you see how liquid that medium is And I will use from smaller bottle right here. And that is our body oil. This is Venetian red. Today I will mix with different mediums. Ooh. Yeah, I need that one. <laughs> so you see that. Um, again the bodied oil itself you can't use because it will change it will change the property of your paint it will make your paint glossy and your brush strokes much longer but it will prolong the time of drying time so you need to remember that and if you want to very often we hear i want to paint very quickly and so that's why i use solvents there is another thing we need to talk about it's solvents and um, solvents are basically lubricants that's what you that's how if you think about what what is the solvent it's something what you take your oil and you add solvent and you want that more fluid and usually you saying then you do need that for underpainting but you need to remember when you put solvent you underbinding your paint what does it mean the oil is a binder in your oil painting paint oil paint so when it's too thick what you do 
you add or oil, which will prolong uh, time of your uh, drying time, or you use solvent. With solvent, it dries very fast. It's very liquidy and uh, dries very fast, and you can wor uh, work very fast after that, the layer after layer. But solvent is not good for your uh, health. And through seven years of our classes, we convinced so many artists stop painting with uh, uh, solvents. Even if sometimes artists are a little bit confused by saying then odorless mineral spirits are not as dangerous as turpentine. It's not true. You just don't smell as much. But if you have enough in your body and if you smell enough, you can be sick. And uh, very often on this videos, what I was um, uh, doing homework, every each of them saying, just open window and you will be okay. No, you're not. And it's a matter of time. And here in Natural Pigments, we, we hear horrible stories. Sometimes people call us and they say, and then they painted 50 years with turpentine. They love it and nothing wrong with that. Everything is good. And we have people who just can't even come in studio if it would be open jar of OMS. So here would be, it could be very, uh, and it often happens. So you work 20 years and suddenly you start at notice and you come to studio and you have headache. And that's how, because you breathe enough and then your body is already not tolerant anymore. And so, and that's not good. And it's too late already. And so that's why people call and say, I switch to water soluble oil paint because I can't stay um, solvents. You very well can paint without solvents. Just use the oil. More often, you even will hear from us, don't use any mediums. But if you do need mediums for specific passages, for specific ideas, then use right tool. Let's go back to, to my oil. And here's our, it's already so liquid. And here I mix in with our Venetian medium. And I will try to put that on panel with the brush. Can we, can we see here? Yes, we can. So here's full, full painting, paint from the, from, oh, like here. Uh, from the tube, that's how it's look like. Now I will put here my paint with aged refined linseed oil. You can see how transparent that is. And here I will try to put ooh, you can see the legs with budded oil and you see how unmanageable that is. So that's why when we tell you be careful with budded oil, that's why. And it will dry forever, forever. Okay. So now I will show you olio gel. Here we will
Here's again our Venetian. I will put a little bit of oil, then we can compare one after another. Here's olio gel. That's how it's look like. I will show all of them at the same time. That's how it look like walnut oil. You see the, the color is a little bit lighter because walnut oil, that's why. Yes. Walnut oil? Gel. Gel. And here's that's what I want to, to show you the difference in the <coughs> in the color. That's why you I probably should show like this. Here's age refined, which we we make the oleo gel, and here is walnut oil, what we make walnut oil gel. Here uh, is oleo res gel. And um, remember, I told you that it has alkyd. It will dry much faster than oleo gel. Here's Wilson's medium. That's how that looks like. And again, this one has turpentine. Please be careful if uh, if you don't like turpentine. So then, this is not your medium. Italian varnish and this is cooked black oil and a little bit of it, it just smallest percentage of the wax custard wax and um, and here's Venetian medium and that's how that looks like and again both of them post this have turpentine please be careful so if you if again if you have trouble with turpentine you don't use this last three okay and i maybe i should move like this and put like this is that visible okay great so wilson walnut and olive gel And um, let's try mix all of them a little bit. Again, all of them were made for specifically for transparency. And if you use for something else, you use in room. I heard that some people are trying to use that for bulking up or uh, for impasta passages. Please be careful because, again, you need to remember all of them, in, except, except Venetian, the, it just oils. There are 98% of the oil and only 2% of fume silica and castor wax. So remember that. If you can, can you switch me a second? Because it's look like gel, and um, it is much more manageable to work than just simple uh, linseed oil. That was the idea. Then at least you will not overshoot with uh, oil, and that's why uh, George made that oleo gel because. Uh, one of the artists called and uh, he said and he absolutely need gel it look like like this this and that and George created exactly what he wanted and um, once we released that to to public we had the phone call from artists who called and he said then oleo gel never dries and uh, we asked how much did you get and he said 50 50 we ask, would you add 50-50 oil to your paint? No. Why would you do this with oleo gel? It's exactly the same idea. You need to remember that any gel, except Venetian, and I, I will mention why is that different, 
it's just linseed oil or walnut oil. So it's just oil. That must be in your mind every time when you add to your paint. Let's go back. And now we are on Wilson's medium. And I can tell you this, when you mix oleo res gel, it's sticky. When you mix with, Val, uh, with uh, Wilson's medium, it will be fluid for maybe half an hour, an hour. And then again, it will be as sticky as oleo res gel. So this is something to remember because you need to think about like, what so why if it dries faster that means it sets faster and that means it will become sticky and some artists absolutely love this drug on the brush that's why i'm for example i'm very careful to suggest for people oleo res gel because if you don't like that that's definitely will drive you nuts because it's uh, really your brush will just stuck to the uh, to the canvas and like you will drag every stroke of uh, of your painting so and here's our venetian medium if i will try to put right now on the same board let's see if it's even possible so here's, here's Visolio gel. It doesn't give much body, just transparency. Here is Walnut gel. Again, it will dry much slower than Olio gel. Here's Olio Res gel. It will be much more glossy. Uh, it will not be glossy. I'm sorry. I'm uh, I'm thinking already about another one. But so this is oleo res gel. Here's Wilson's. Here's Italian. And I, I can't explain to you, but the brush is really sliding. It's, it's, it feels like I am painting with butter. Like literally took the, the piece of the butter and started paint with that. And um, here's our Venetian. So you can see that almost all, except this one, almost all of them look identical when you paint with, uh, with that because this is gel mediums. And what I had the homework and I made for you, swatches. And here's, this is, um, this swatch, I'm. This is a uh, six mil, uh, mill millimeters of the inch. Yes, George. How how the six thousands? It's a uh, quite thick. You probably never paint like uh, uh, as thick as this, but I I made it just to see for you full uh, full color. Here is two milli uh, millimeters millim mills mills and this is with velasquez and it's 50 50 with velasquez and you see how it's transparent we will uh we will talk about velasquez next one next uh, slide and um, here's oleo gel and again it's uh two mil and here's venetian and you can see the transparency, almost identical. Okay, so now in same, 
same board I will show you our three paste mediums and here will be pasta Again, remember in pasta we are making just with aged refined linseed oil and just regular chalk you can do this at home here's our Velasquez medium and in Velasquez medium already see how it's look like it's long we mix our aged refined and um, vacuum body extra high viscosity and here our transparent base which does have okay I hope you will see so this how impasta looks like and this is Velasquez remember we we were talking about then we can't put a lot of bodied oil the most you can you want me to move a little bit like this okay so you can't use more than 20 percent because if you will add more than 20 it's possible if you want i mean we we don't tell you don't but so it will be sticky and you uh, probably can't even paint with that but editing to the paint it will be possible to work and here we have our transparent base under painting transparent base very similar to Velasquez but dries much faster how fast I can tell you this it's depend where you are in the country or, or in the world now it could dry if it's dry and warm in your studio so it could dry over probably a couple hours but it, again it will depend on temperature and on paint because it depends with what with what color with what pigment will, you will use because if you will use this Prussian blue probably will dry uh, on you in in couple hours but if it if you will mix let's say with cadmium with titanium then it will dry overnight and uh, it will be very very matte surface that specifically we made uh, that medium for that reason because that's why we call under painting then then it it will dry very fast and you can work on morning uh, next layers and it will be um flat enough then all oil will the, the next layer will adhere very well to to the previous one let's go back to our table and i will mix now every each of them here i will again so uh in this in this case would be um would be interesting to mix 50 50 so I will do that exactly exact amount and then you will see uh, how the, the color change or not although it's look like white paint but you see what we did we 
same same uh, like here in olio gel we have the oil here exactly the same oil but what we do have we have extra particle particles what does it mean you know when i met my husband i didn't speak english and uh, first two years him and i we were we were talking uh with dictionary and uh, with drawing so let me explain you one small thing thank you Leslie. I, can you hold it? Just like this. Mm -hmm. I will need back so think about your paint like a bunch of particles together and between that particles is oil and then when you take your aged refined linseed oil and put to your paint you just making these particles are separate from each other that's how you make paint transparent but unfortunately adding more oil yes it does make paint transparent but eventually not in your life probably time life a lifetime but maybe your grandchildren it will yellow faster and so then you don't want that and on top of that you weakening your your surf your uh, film so what we did in Velasquez and impasta medium we add transparent pigment which is uh, in this case, we added chalk, but in our store, we have 20, no, 19 different extender pigments, which we will talk next month on December 10th. Whole our art material advisor program will be based on, uh, we will talk about different extenders, and I will show you at least 16 of them then you will understand which one you like and uh and if you uh, if you want to try all of them we have even set right now but so what you do with velasquez and impasta medium so on top of your your uh, pigments what you already had right here you put in transparent pigments like that and you still making very transparent layer but at least you don't lose integrity of your uh, of your painting that's what happening with velasquez and impasta medium that's uh, why it's important to understand what why is that better than just any linseed oil or thank you so or uh, any uh, gel medium again for every passage you uh, you use it is need so th but you absolutely need to have a understanding what are you doing so if it's like the last the last layers of the painting it's okay to use uh, oleo gel and all this you know fluid mediums whatever you you want but on the beginning if you do want to very sound structure it would be much better to use the um, paste mediums okay so let's go back to thank you very much so here we had our impasta medium and you see how it's behave it, it's why we call impasta because with that you can build up uh, impasta uh, properties here we have velasquez medium and with velasquez medium and you can see again the change in the color is not much it's not shifting the temperature of your painting and um, Yeah.
again as a, as impasta you can create impasta but with that you can make a longer strokes that's the difference and that difference giving uh, uh gave us this vacuum bodied linseed oil so we will go to next one i hope it's not already dried on me so here's our underpainting transparent base and um, you can see even by mixing together you you already see the difference a um, little bit so here is matte a little bit glossier and here is completely matte idea behind of, uh, that medium was I know uh, uh, several of you calling us and saying then we want uh, very fast drying uh, under painting same like I think gambling has fast mat mat fast mat <laughs> so but in this case you need to buy every color with under painting base you can make your own fast mat very fast and so then you can use any of uh, colors what you have in your studio you just mix with uh, base and that would be your very fast drying under painting layer so going back to uh george if you will uh, put back to yes great so okay now i will it's all upside down for me, so I'm trying to figure out <laughs> how to show you. So here's impasta. You see the difference? And again, you can create impasta Here is Velasquez, which is stickier. And... Uh, Again, here is the idea is not only you can create impasta look, but you definitely can have uh, longer strokes. This one. And uh, here's transparent base. And by the time we finish today program, this one already will set and i will definitely return back to that and uh, we can show uh, more and at this point i will show you again i'm sh uh, i'm going back to my homework and um, go back to this so I, I already showed you Venetian. I showed now it's Velasquez and you can see more you add, more transparent layer become. And here's base. And if I will somehow find the light, can I find the light where I can show you how one is matte and one is, okay, here. Okay, here's matte and here's glossy. You can see because it's still enough oil there to make that paint glossy. But look at that with Venetian. Venetian has different, because glass has a refractive index 1.5 and uh, oil has refractive index 1.48. It's very similar, but still it's higher, uh, higher refractive index. It's why Venetian medium looks much more glossier. So here I will show you. Here's Velasquez medium. Okay, here, how do, okay, here. 
First one is Velasquez medium, second oleo gel, and next one is Venetian medium. And you can see how Venetian medium, okay, here you can't, Venetian medium is much more transparent. It's due to the glass because on top of that, what we were talking about um, on that, that uh, drawing I was showing you then, the particles are in between your particles of the pigment are transparent, which is chalk. In Venetian medium, it's glass. It's even more transparent. It's literally just the light is going through uh, through that particles. And um, so here I uh, I will return back to one small thing again. So this is full color. Here's full color. Here's with oleo gel, and here's with uh, with, with Velasquez medium. And what's good about paste mediums. You basically can bulk up your paint without changing. Oh, here's much better look. No, no, it's um, uh, if you go back. Yep. You see here how one is glossy and one is matte. Yep. Like this. So uh, do we have time for ultramarine? Okay. I wanted to show you the difference between two colors. So not only the what we were talking about, the medium can change the look of your paint, but the same medium will look different and will behave different on different color. So that you need to, to remember too, because when you call us and say like, you told us then it will dry in two days and it's already three days and it's still uh, tacky. It's because every pigment, same as what we were talking about, medium we started, it's chemical. And you, you should start think about this because nobody taught you before, but now since you heard that, it must be in your brain every time when you uh, open the tube. And especially now, of course, we are talking about the, the some of your tubes have several pigments. And so when they interact with each other and then with another one, so then sometimes it's very unpredictable. So I will show you another color and it will behave completely different than from that because this is I showed you Venetian medium this is natural <laughs> I'm sorry Venetian red that's yeah I should choose different color <laughs> instead of Venetian so Venetian red this natural color it's uh, uh, natural pigments and it's big particles and that's why it's look on uh, on the swatch very matte and now I will show you my ultramarine. And uh, Leslie, if I will ask you to just take this out from here, this and this one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So here. Thank you. Yep, yeah, that's it. I'm good. Here, thank you. Thank you. So here's, uh, again, you remember I showed this one, how matte is, the, because it's bigger particles. And um, so here's much smaller particles. And here's six mil and here's two mil. And you see the difference. So if you paint, it's just from the tube. I didn't add any... Uh, solvent, any oil, and that's how it will look different. But here I mix with oleo gel. Okay, here. And here's just one mil thickness, and here's two mil thickness, uh, thickness with oleo gel. 
and you see the difference and how transparent uh, that is compared and Jesus this is kind of transparent too and uh, so here's let's drop this here's olio gel here's venetian medium exactly the same 50 50 and it's uh two mils thickness you see the transparency there okay let's um let's put that back and i will bring ultramarine here it's ultramarine red shade and um, I will mix right now with, first I will mix with age defined linseed oil, just to see the, again, back to transparency. And um, oil gel. Walnut. Olio red gel. I will skip Wilson's. Let's do Venetian and Italian varnish. Here's Venetian. Venetian medium, it's essentially the same as Italian varnish, but has a glass. So that they, uh, on the, by structure, they are quite different, but by formula, it, that, that's the only difference between two of them. It's, uh, it does have a glass. And glass, when you look in the jar, which we sell glass for you. So if you want to mix with any of your paint, if you look, if you like the look of jewel-like, so then glass would be your uh, your great medium as a dry even, as a dry pigment, because nevertheless, it is pigment. It's just transparent one, but, but pigment. And uh, here I will put in pasta medium. And Velasquez. I almost forgot to tell you we have another one. It's called Impasta Party. If you if you would call us, I would not suggest for you to buy that. But we do have artists who absolutely need that, and that's how it's um, look like. So we we sell on four ounce and uh, eight ounce jars. It's very heavy. Uh, it's probably here's probably pound of uh, four, four ounces and imagine how much is the how much he heavier it's eight ounces. and um, essentially it's just again uh, chalk and linseed oil but it's so few of the linseed oil in that uh, in that medium it's so thick so if you paint with palette knife and you don't want your brush strokes disappear, but you want very, very pronounced, <laughs> pronounced the um, uh, strokes, so then that would be the one. On top of that, every jar, we pour a little bit of the walnut oil. And that's how it's look like. Let me just show show us how it's look like, the, and you can see. Because if you bought that, and you can see the oil, it's not separation, which is again would not be bad part, but uh, it's so thick, it's not even possible to not uh, to to have a separation on that medium. What you will do, you will just take out the oil, pour somewhere where I don't know some kind of jar yeah thank you <laughs> so you pour it out 
you use how much you need so let's let's try it today so that's not much pudding but it's stuck right there but what i will do right now i hope it's visible you see how that thick of course we could not put that to to tubes that's why it's uh, sold only in jars and if you open the jar and the oil somehow already oxidized then it will be skin please don't be alarmed on that product it's very very often happen it's not damaged product it's what it is and if you find that unmanageable it's not your medium don't use that so but again just for for those of you who does need because we do have people calling us and because a couple of years ago we decided do not make that product at all because we had people who bought that product and they were not happy because they thought it's skinned out it's very thick that's what it is and uh, but we had people calling us and begging us to bring, uh, to bring that product back we did and uh, i do want you specifically understand so like if you don't know what it is call us i will explain to you and or watch that program and then you now will know and this is definitely not in my case, if I would buy, uh, I will say like what it is, it's uh, why is that even needed for uh, paint, uh, oil painting? And I will show you right now why. So here's our ultramarine. And I think you, George, can even put closer, yes, and show how that basically you can even make a structural paint from that medium. So back to mixing our ultramarine. In this case, I said that it is... Um, red shade our green shade even stickier than this one you can see how you probably stringer stringer thank you <laughs> stringer um so this is very unusual because uh, you can put back on me so if you buy ultramarine from any other companies uh ultramarine is one of the most useful obviously blue colors one of the oldest colors but unfortunately it just doesn't like oil it's um lipophobic it loves water in watercolors when you mix the ultramarine with uh, watercolor medium or whatever you if you make the i don't know like egg tempera distemper whatever so that works beautifully but when you mix ultramarine with oil it doesn't like oil and it's usually when you put the uh, mix the oil with uh, with pigment it's just sitting like and waiting then and it's hate the oil and it's kind of like repealing in the oil and at some point it's relaxed and it's take oil and usually when you come back like in a couple hours what we do in our company we come back to our couple hours and it's relaxed and it's puddled so we put more pigment because we overshoot first time so we put more pigment and then it's again buckle up and so sitting like this and it's very stiff paint and a couple hours later it's again puddle so we are doing that couple times other companies instead of this instead of going back and forth and working with uh, uh, with this property so other uh, companies are putting additives and um, it's purely for the production and it's but unfortunately it's the it's the additive 
change the property of that uh, painting paint that's why ultramarine very often when you buy from other companies it's look very buttery very fluffy it's due to the additive so for our ultramarine when people buy ultramarine, nowadays it's already everybody accustomed to our ultramarine and they are talking about like how long and stringy it is but uh, it's quite unusual if you never uh, paint it uh, with our ultramarine try it for fun you can very possible then you can hate it but i hope you will love it so here's back to ultramarine here's our stringy ultramarine and uh, we can mix with oil make that transparent we can mix a little bit with oleo gel and have exactly the same look as with oil but at least it's a little bit much a little bit manageable manageable Here's walnut oil, and again, if you are one of these people who uh, think then there are some non-yellow or less yellow in oil, so then here's uh, here's your medium. It's walnut oil gel. But if we are talking about look, it's absolutely the same when you mix with pigment. Here's all your rest gel, and it's you can see it's sticky for sure, and it's kind of giving different uh, body to. And that's the difference in the pigment. That's what we were talking about. What, what's the difference in uh, traditional big particle uh, pigments and uh, uh, synthetic pigments, small particles. Here, you definitely will notice difference in. Italian varnish it's much darker it's look darker and uh, again we we talk about that sliding property that would be the one to try and Venetian medium much more transparent thank you much more transparent I will put all, every each of them on our board and we can see Here's impasta, and I will mix at least 50-50. Velasquez. I don't want to mix 50-50 with oleo gel because it, it is even even here you can see it's how it's behave different than from uh, in pasta mediums but here's our Velasquez you can see then it's quite similar with in pasta putty and Here's our transparent base. It's already started settling actually while I was talking here. Be careful with that one. Some of you really love that, but again, uh, don't put on everybody because that's what happening very often. People find their own medium and they suddenly say, then this is the secret and so this is the best ever they used. I will go back to our, so this is Venetian, again here's, here was our oleo gel, oops, here, okay, here was again full color we were talking about, and let's see the glass, see how glossy that is, it was not even close in our in our natural color and um, here I have Velasquez medium 
Peter's Velasquez medium. Still glossy, but you can see the, it's again 50-50. I was uh, making specifically for this uh, event today. Here's transparent base. So, and here I put just two mil, but look what I, when I was making six mil. It's so, it's already dried. By the way, uh, none of them I, I will touch even because I did this five days ago. No, I will, just for you. And you can see then it's still sticky. It's probably, so from uh, from what I show all the mediums, base, was, base th this one, was dried uh, in a couple, uh, a couple days it was completely dried, but in a uh, in in couple hours it was settled. And set, set, thank you. <laughs> I need to go back to my English. And again, uh, so here's back to Venetian, and I can tell you this, it's actually dried due to the turpentine and the black oil. Although black oil itself is not a dryer, but it definitely will dry faster with uh, other ingredients. And so you can, uh, I, you can see, I, I can touch that. And uh, no way I will touch this with oil. I mean, no way it will be the same. So you see that is all your gel so okay um what else should we cover uh today oh thank you <laughs> okay thank you thank you balsam okay so this is the the good uh, time to do that and i have balsam essential right here and i have another one canada uh-huh thank you Whew. Canada this is plasticizer just think about the word plasticizer it's what make other substances plasticky so this is your Canada balsam it's great to uh, glazing and making jewel like but if you will put a lot, it never will dry. You need to remember about this. So we do sell, and I always thinking, uh, because we sell in small uh, bottles like this. And, but when buy, people buy on this, I always wondering what do they do with uh, Canada balsam. In order to make a manageable medium, George created balsam essential. So what is balsam essential? It's three ingredients. It's uh, spike oil, Canada balsam, and uh, bodied oil. That still will be very glossy, what you want from, what I understand what people would want from Canada balsam. But at least it's not overwhelming because Believe me, if you will put enough Canada balsam, your painting never will dry. Be careful with that. We still sell it. It's always, you know, it's always interesting in our classes because we have all these mediums and we always talk about them. And uh, on the end, we every time say, don't buy any of them. Try to paint without mediums. And everybody is asking, like, why the hell you you selling all of that mediums? Because when you know what you're doing, what when you know what you want, you at least will have that opportunity to buy from us. But don't listen your friends because your you know best friend painted with something and she liked. Or, like I said, that stranger who passed and, and used the 20 years, it worked for him, but it's very possible then it will not work for you because every each of you have different ways to paint, different nervous system, different ideas. And if you know what you want, 
but you don't know what to buy, you call us, we definitely will uh, navigate you, but we refuse to sell you just two mediums for everybody. It doesn't work like, at least in, in our company, it doesn't work like that. We do work with professional artists and you have so much creative idea, home, so many creative ideas. And so we want to help you, but, it doesn't mean that then you need just because we sell everything and you like us so you need to buy everything so let's go back to uh mediums we have another medium uh and again it's historical mediums and it's um six of them i will show you three right now uh this is it's called rublev oil medium one two three and um first number one is made number one is made with spike oil and bodied linseed oil let's say you listen today me or you did go to our painting best practices facebook page or even better you attend our class and you know all danger about solvents and you understand the risk but you still want to use it. So that would be probably the safest way to use because this is 50-50 bodied oil and um, spike oil in this case. Why bodied oil? Because usually when you make your underpainting or you tone in your, uh, your canvas, you don't want to use just simple linseed oil you need to use bodied oil which has a longer polymer polymers and when you paint with that then polymers are protecting your surface from sinking in on future layers so that's why you read that formula what is it um three uh, what is it so body oil so uh, the damar varnish and um, body oil yes turpentine. turpentine turpentine the good part is about body oil okay part about turpentine the ba bad part is the mar because you don't want to use any resins in your medium uh, in your paintings and uh and if, if you still question and why you uh, you can go and read on natural pigments website because we don't have any time today for chemistry but this one uh, so again number one is with spike oil 50 50 the second one is with turpentine and the third one with uh, mineral spirit so the the fastest dryer will be, of course, with turpentine because turpentine dries very fast. The OMS will dry the, the longest time. And the spike oil, if you just like the spike color, uh, the spike smell. So that's, that's only why you would choose that, although it's more expensive. And um, there are some claims that it's not as dangerous as turpentine. We still don't know. We kind of understand the chemistry. We, we, we know that it's absolutely, when you put in a chemistry, it's absolutely the same, similar to turpentine, but some people just because it lo smells lovely, so they think it's uh, less dangerous, it's not. But it's your preferences. And um, mediums four, five, and six, it's exactly the same with uh, spike oil, turpentine, and mineral spirit, but in walnut body oil. That's what we do. We body oil or we sun thicken, sun thicken uh, walnut oil in our factory, and then we, are, uh, we mix that with, uh, with solvents. That would be your underpainting medium if you if you do prefer uh, the solvents one thing i i made it if george you will show small thing here again it's my homework i did here 
and it's almost invisible so here i did oleo gel so i don't know how to even okay here's oleo gel oleo res gel venetian medium impasta and that is i'm sorry velasquez and that's base underpainting base this is completely dry this is still sticky this is dry this is sticky and this is not dried at all so i did that three days ago just to to have that for you to understand how and uh, how it's look like and again on the bottom you can see and this one is absolutely dry but notice one thing you see this this is reaction to my aluminum tool the chalk is quite abrasive medium uh, uh, quite abrasive uh, uh, pigment so it's why uh, often and again i don't want you you know freak out but very often on the tube because it's aluminum tube you can see the black residue don't be scared it's nothing wrong with that you can just clean up but it's just simple reaction to to metal and it's not often happened but sometimes it, it does so just just to you to know and again i uh, i did want to mention about skinning certain because we do have impasta party impasta medium and velasquez medium in eight ounce and 16 ounce jars apparently some artists using a lot and uh, if it's skin uh, skin down it's it's not a bad uh, product so don't worry if if you want to use you can absolutely use it if you can't so just away and uh, it's quite inexpensive product we made that inexpensive so then it will not be big grief about and another thing i wanted to mention to you don't try to push mediums to do something what they not intend to be don't challenge mediums we make other companies make uh, uh, mediums for specific things you need to remember that and if that is wrong it's not what you wanted try to find your best medium let's look right now here what we were painted today and so of course this is almost dry right now already but this is yeah this is settled but still a little bad and of course i don't even i will not attempt to uh to touch other ones but this one i did this on like i said um, a couple days ago here is completely dry this is full color oh thank you so here's with uh, oleo gel and with venetian medium it's completely dry and let me clean my hands with ultramarine it's still sticky oleo res gel wow that's funny is that oleo res gel oh i'm sorry it's uh, i'm sorry that's oil, uh, oil 50 50 oil yes thank you so oleo gel still sticky and of course you can see then even here i yeah where is that right here So here's uh, Velasquez medium, still sticky, but uh, not not much. And of course, uh, ultramarine still. Venetian already settled on both. And of course, this one is completely dry. So if that's something help you to understand on timing and look, that would make my life happy so but what else have you, have you talked about balsam essential oil medium yet? We did. yes we, we did. did that's the balsam essential that's what i i was talking about yes Can you talk about it again for just a minute for lourdes yes just, uh, 
Lourdes here, uh, Balsam Essential, and I do believe on our class we mentioned uh, you. Were, uh, I believe you you were in our. Okay, so, okay, different Lourdes. Okay, <laughs> Balsam Essential. This is three components: spike oil, budded oil, and Canada balsam. That makes your brush strokes are very fluid and very plasticky and your uh, paint will look very jewel like that's that's the that's the most yes what else what i can so yes that's don't use if you <laughs> if you don't know leveling flow, out. flow out leveling and flow out yes it's level the, the brush strokes and uh, definitely will uh, will make a different look on your uh, painting. Then it's just simple. Um, even while, uh, even budded oil will look different. Yes, you can use any solvent. Uh, so turpentine, again, if it's uh, spike oil here, so you can use exactly the spike oil or you can uh, use any, any other oh, solvents. Turpentine. Or, okay, turpentine, turpentine, and spike oil. Can you address why you did not discuss a cocktail oil? Yes, I can. Epoxide oil was one of the our best sellers, and uh, among the bodied drying oils. Um, that was probably one of the second drying after pale. We have pale drying oil here somewhere, and uh, uh, epoxide oil was drying very fast. But we lost the source of the epoxide oil for now. We we are trying very hard to bring back in uh, our. In our sets, what we still have, it's um, it's linseed oil samplers. We still have small bottles. I don't want you attached to that. We do have great product. It's uh, called pale, uh, pale drying oil, if you do specifically use for that reason. But again, I, I mean, everything can be substituted. So epoxide oil we just lost for a second uh, as soon as we will find uh, source back we definitely will bring that uh, that oil back any other questions yes yes please you can just read for me as as to the the essential oil medium uh, Lord has asked again, if I want texture and address on the last layer of my painting, um, can I use impasto at the end of the painting on the last layers? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, you can. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm. So the question is, can I use impasto on the last layers of my painting? Yes, absolutely. So what good about impasto or Velasquez medium? you can use absolutely confident from very bottom to the very up because again the structure of that medium because it does have oil on top not only oil but it has the pigments so absolutely the only thing with um, uh, with impasta or velasquez you need to remember so if you you can again you can use as small a percentage as like 10 percent and you can use as big percentage as a 90 percent and little bit of the color but it will make your paint transparent so it's kind of you need to find your balance if you are making uh, impasta on the last uh, layers of your painting yes you absolutely can yes george yes is there a substitute for old-fashioned copal, copal medium? Oh, so probably George will answer that because why would you, is that, okay, let's do this. 
what's the reason why you want to use Copal? So you just, you can, you can just say then. There, uh, the, the best uh, replacement for Copal today is an alkyd medium. But it will dry matte. Anyhow, you no. take alkyd. Al under, no. under, Underpainting is designed to dry matte. Yeah. But not. Uh, but most alkyds are tend glossy, to dry yeah. glossy. Glossy, okay. So that's the difference. I think he wrote something. Is that okay? Um, so, so uh, which uh, which copal medium are you referring to, Julia? Is it, uh, there's another, uh, we'll go on to another question. Uh, is it okay to replace turpentine with oil of spike lavender in Damar varnish? Um, so, <clears throat> yes. To, to it, some degree. Some degrees, because again, I just mentioned about spike oil has all turpins exactly, not but, exactly the same, but okay. yes. The only, okay, the only problem with, if you're trying to make a DeMar varnish with spike oil, that would be a mistake. So, and, and, but if you're trying to use it as a medium, you, you can to some degree, but you're going to find that turpentine will work better overall. So, we don't recommend that replacing spike oil uh, as a, it will to some degree dissolve uh, Turpentine. Uh, the me, uh, Can we discuss kettled bodied oil? Yes. Kettled bodied oil, it was uh, cooked. <laughs> Probably, George, you know what? Let's do this because this is, I knew then it will be, my English will not be enough to explain that. So, do you want to come here? No, I'll just, no, I'll, okay. I'll just, I'll He's right it. here. Say but he will just kettle bodied oil. The difference stand oils can be are basically cooked oils. The difference is what how they're cooked. So they not only are they cooked for different periods of time at different temperatures, but they can be cooked in an open container, a closed container, and uh, in a vacuum. And kettle bodied oil is cooked in a closed container under an inert atmosphere. So the difference is it's going to be a little bit darker than the vacuum bodied oil, and it will have a higher acid number, which gives it a different handling property. So that's the main thing. Uh, it's, it's a very subtle difference and um, but you can see the difference uh, in terms of its handling. Some people like it very much, uh, either the vacuum body, and some people prefer the kettle body. The only way to really determine that is for you to try them. Uh, and we have sampler kits, you want to show that, uh, that give you a lot of different oils to try out so that you can determine what is better. But what we do recommend is using oils more so than, than resinous mediums or any, any mediums with solvents. Just use straight oils and try those first. And then, uh, and then of course, the paste mediums uh, are also very good. In Linsit, um, a sampler we have aged refined, extra high viscosity bodied oil, pale drying, and in this case, epoxide, one, once we finish this, Set, so it, we probably will substitute something else, but now we have epoxide oil on that, that set. Somebody asked, oh, Lillian asked, is the difference between cold pressed linseed oil and refined that the cold pressed will yellow over time? Um, cold pressed oils will yellow more over time than refined oils, and that's because uh, in refined oils, they've eliminated some of the coloring or chromophore substances in oil. 
and it will also uh, uh, alkaline or uh, refined oils dry faster than cold pressed oils because they don't have some of the antioxidants that are still found in cold pressed oil. So just keep that in mind. Um, and so, so why would anybody want to use the cold pressed oil? It has a higher acid number than refined oils. And when you're making paint, this might be an advantage or not. It just depends on the pigment. So if you would buy um, cold pressed linseed oil from us last year, it would be much more darker. This time, this batch we bought and uh, it's much lighter. But again, on the end, it will dry. Uh, uh, it will dry and darken a little bit, or yellow a little bit more than than just regular one. Yes. I have a question from Kristoff. He asks, "Does um, alpha median affect oil paints that are painted on top?" On top of the alkit, uh, on top of oil color. So then, alkit on top. I believe that's what he's okay. asking. So basically. Remember, if you're using a, a alkyd medium that uh, which dries glossy, it it you you want to be you want to use it sparingly in your paint because it will it will create glossy paint layers. Except for if it's formulated as a paste, which is the case of the underpainting transparent base, it dries dead matte because it is a paste medium. Just keep that in mind. Paste mediums add, they're like your paint. They, they like paint, they have a solid particle, which, uh, which makes it uh, better to use overall, less propensity to, uh, to yellowing and, uh, and fast, always faster drying. So paste mediums are always faster drying than gel mediums or liquid mediums. That's the, that's the rule of thumb. They also will yellow less because always keep in mind, adding more oil or more medium always will, will increase yellowing because it is a yellow substance, just the nature of oil painting. So that's why we, we continually say or tell you, avoid adding mediums to your paint, use paint straight out of the tube as much as possible. When you can't, then you go to a medium and use a medium for a specific purpose. Can you talk about the product called Zest? Is it safer? Is it a solvent? Is it not a solvent? Um, what is it? Zest is a is both a solvent and an emulsion with with water. So it's a citrus solvent, most likely D-limonene. So it still contains a solvent, but because it contains a smaller amount, uh, it's less toxic. But you can't dilute your paints with it. You can use it maybe for cleaning, but then again, why, why even use any solvent whatsoever for cleaning when you can just use soap and water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to replace turpentine with, with oiled spike lavender and damar varnish? Oh, we just we, did we it. We just that. covered that. that. We right. answered that, oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Okay. Um, how long does it take oleo res gel to dry? Because it's resin, uh, it does dry faster, but I very careful recommend that one because it's sticky. So what it, just think about just pure physics. When it's drying, it's oxidizing and it's become, the, the surface has become very, um, it's not dried yet, but it's settled and sets. sets. It sets. So it probably, if I will put oleo gel and oleo res gel, oleo res gel, like oleo gel will dry probably like in three days. Oleo res will uh, dry maybe in two days. So I think it's like this, but it will be glossier a uh, little bit on that oleo res gel. Someone asks if we will make oleo gel with black oil, which is? Italian varnish. <laughs> yeah. 
Italian varnish. It's already there, so please use it. Be careful. Do you have a medium for egg emulsion? No. No, no you, egg emulsion mediums. So you just make your egg emulsion medium. And Hi, Jaime asks. Hi, Jaime. What would you miss you? What would you recommend for toning canvas that would get a similar effect to the old turpentine thin paint? Underpainting yeah. So yes, that's um, that would be probably the safest one under painting base, Just and you can mix with any color. And if it's too thick, because you saw how it settles very fast, you can uh, add little <laughs> sets very fast. <laughs> Some. English words just go through my head and never leave. Yeah, so this they stuck here. So you can add any oil, preferably linseed oil, if you need just fluidity. And uh, that would be a good one to use. Sangita asks. Yes. Uh, Hi, Sangita. Asks Julia. Yes. Uh, she asks, are all of your mediums compatible with one another? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I was thinking like there's something could be. No, absolutely. You can use, change it. If you want to speed up, you can add one for what I explained about uh, drying. If you want body, so then definitely you can mix, you can mix impasta and Velasquez together. Absolutely. Another question from San Gita. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I yes, correctly. correct. Uh, can you talk about the sun thickened oil and its properties? Yes. Sun thickened linseed oil, somewhere here. I that's one, and I had another one. Sun thickened like this. Again, one made in winter, one in summer. Basically, it's just romanticized oil because it does of course it does have property it does slide different it does change um, because it's bodied oil it's become bodied oil through the time and through the not only oxidation but with uh, reaction with lead in our case but on the end, it's uh, darkening the same or yellowing the same, and uh, it's. You want to add something? Yeah, no, that. just uh, re just keep in mind that sun thickened oil, unlike bodied, bodied oils, oils, although it is a type of bodied, bodied oil, but bodied oils that are just cooked, and especially those cooked in a vacuum, will will uh, not yellow as much as a sun-thickened oil because sun-thickened oils are oxidized oils. So they're thickened through not only heat, but also through exposure to oxygen. So remember, oxidized, oxidative pro processes tend to yellow oils more than uh, those that are, that are thickened thermally only. So that's a general rule of thumb. But why would want somebody want to use a sun thickened oil? It will probably dry faster than a bodied oil, uh, and again, it has it has a higher fatty acid, uh, free fatty acid content, which again makes it a little bit different in its handling property. So, just you know, those are general general rules of thumb. What's the difference between epoxide oil and the bodied sand oil? That's what we already covered. So, epoxide. Epoxide oil is a copolymerized oil. So it is a synthetic linseed oil. So it's 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 been modified synthetically, and so it tends to form a harder film and dry a little bit faster than a bodied oil. There's a question from Gorb. Mm -hmm. It says. There is, a, there is a popular method of painting called the wipeout method. With your underpainting medium, does it give someone time to do this and wipe the white areas out of a brown, red base? Everyone does it with a solvent, and I don't. Probably not much. So again, it's depend. 
see again you can control the, it's yes the underpainting. But, so underpainting you can control because again if you add a little bit oil to that if it dries to you so fast and again you need to try and again it will be depend on pigment and uh, if you add a little bit more oil but itself it dries very fast and so then you in this case you absolutely need to because it's, it will be new medium for you try it and see how it will work but it do, does dry very fast and maybe i don't know how a long time you have to to go back to what, what you say in wiping i you need to try yeah basically the underpainting but the underpainting transparent base and we also have an underpainting lead white formulated the same way both those products dry on by themselves probably in a half hour you can control that by adding like tanya mentioned oil or your oil color and you can the more oil or the more and, and you don't want to add too much oil but the more oil color you add to it the slow you can slow it down so you can you, and that was the whole point of it is you can uh it's similar to Gamblin's fast matte colors, but instead of having to buy a different color, you just simply add your color to it. You color it, and it, and now you have a very fast drying oil color for underpainting. Mm -hmm. Would Venetian be a better choice than impasto if I want texture but a more fluid movement under the brush? So that's why we we were that's why I covered all of them in pasta and Velasquez and Venetian three of them together, because uh, I think it's like this: Venetian medium has um, glass, and glass is when you paint with glass and oil, it's slippery, and it's very good to add just to the paint and just to make very transparent layers. But if you do want impasta look, I would not suggest that, and especially on very first layers uh, of the painting, because it's, let's talk about, it's more expensive. So it, anyhow you look, uh, the impasta in Velasquez is very cheap or very inexpensive. And uh, the glass, uh, glass is quite expensive uh, pigment. And so making Venetian, uh, medium it's why it's more expensive there's no reason for you to use venetian medium uh, on the bottom or even for impasta unless you are doing this on very top layer yeah you can and you can mix with um, with uh, impasta medium to make more bulky or if you will be next month on that art advice art material advisor i will show you when we put together all kind of pigments, transparent pigments, and I will specifically will make a point to, to show not only chalk and silica and talc, but glass. More? Yeah. So would, uh, Tim asks, uh, would the glassy Venetian medium produce a similar glassy film that is achieved with Canada balsam um, mediums minus the solvent. Um, I, okay, I, I will repeat the question. Oh, will Venetian medium look the same or show the same look as a uh, Canada balsam? Probably because when you when you look on refractive index of Canada balsam and the uh, glass medium the Venetian medium, uh, which is include the glass, it's very similar. But the, the, the problem is, of course, the, the Canada balsam is plasticizer. It's not a drying uh, fast. So then I think it will be quite, quite similar. It will be different behavior. That's for sure. I can tell you this because uh, Canada balsam is very sticky and the stringy. Flow up. Flow up. Flow up. <laughs> so, but as a look, yes, it will probably look very similar. Although, you know, you gave me idea just to, to make a swatch uh, for next time and I will definitely show them 
on our next ses session. So uh, how to look both of them. That's it. No. One more question. Uh huh. It relates to um, uh, shipping and ordering. Yeah. Ozar lives in Turkey and asks if he can order from the EU website. Yes. Okay. Now we have EU website. We uh, it works perfect. They send all over the world actually. But the thing is, we don't have all products there yet, and some products probably depend on the uh, the country. If it's some kind of regulations, they uh, you you have something to add? Yeah, we uh, natural picking side EU sh does ship to Turkey. Yes, and yeah. that's what I said. Right. Yeah. You said all over the world. Just yes, just to EU Turkey and Turkey. And Turkey. Yes, we do send to Turkey. That's it. Thank you very much. It was again pleasure like always to to talk to you one bad part i don't see your eyes but i'm happy to be here for you and uh, see you next time uh, remember next thursday george will have studio tips here in natural pigments and he will talk about paint and varnishing how it's different and um, everything what you wanted to know about varnishes and next uh, month i will see you on uh, december 10th and we will talk about extenders thank you very much bye